So it is female, and from the teeth, I can tell you she's young, early 20s, oldest. OK. Dr Balcom did various tests on the major bones and teeth, and she was able to determine with actually a pretty good deal of certainty that these remains are actually those of a young female between the ages of 13 and 15. Did you see our Stuart? Hayley was a friend of mine. And there's something I need to tell you. Two days before Hayley went missing, when I was supposed to be doing a cleaning job, I was actually in the park meeting a lad. And Hayley, who was a mate, did the job for me. The cleaning job. It was in a holiday rental. The property was called The Spinney, and she thinks it's still on the books of an agency called Durrell and Martin. That's him. Um, took the Spinney for the millennium from the 27th to the 2nd, um, along with, yeah, three other families. Hello? Hi, M Mr Hollis. Yes. Um, DCI Cass Stewart and DI Sunny Khan. Uh, we wondered if you had five minutes, please. I wanted, if I may, um, to ask you about a house you rented in Midnam in December 1999. This is a photo of Hayley Reid. We're just trying to uh, corroborate um, evidence from another witness who thinks Hayley might have cleaned the house you rented. I have no recollection of that. Uh, what did you all get up to on the um, Millennium evening? Uh, I think uh, the adults watched a movie and then all went to bed after Big Ben. And then no one went out again for the rest of the night? No. Well, obviously I recognise her, but I, I don't recall ever having seen her at the house at any point. The kids would have gone to bed at... Uh, nine, ten, maybe. And no one went out after that? Nope. Absolutely sure? Yeah. You know who she is, though? Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I never saw her in that house. Oh, what? I think I did see her at the house. Are you sure? Yeah, just the one time. But uh, she's got a distinctive face, so yeah, I think that was her. Okay. No, it wasn't a pleasant evening. What it was was a train wreck. The kids were knackered. It had been a long day getting there, so they went to bed about 9.30, which was good. That they were in bed, I mean, because they didn't have to see Chris go completely nuts. And to be honest, we were all quite relieved when he then just suddenly walked out. Of the house? Mm-hmm. Anything else? Someone might have bought some Coke. I don't know, maybe had a bit of that. Anyone go after him? Yeah, after a minute or two. Uh, James and Tim. Pete had been out since right after the meal, trying his luck at the pub. Oh, that feels wrong. Yeah, maybe. But not as wrong as all four men having clearly lied to us through their teeth. There is that. Hey, Fran, what's up? There was another employee. Same build, same colouring, same hair as Hayley. Which means we now have four men, variously pissed, drugged up, possibly mentally unstable, out somewhere in Midnam at exactly the same time as Hayley. And when did you last speak to your father, Miss Lowe? Last contact I had with him was when Mum died, six years ago. I wrote to him via his friend, Tim. So you haven't actually spoken since... The day Mum threw him out. Right. They split, because in October 1999, police officers arrested him at his office as an early part of the landmark case. Basically, he'd used his credit card to visit child abuse websites. Well, given what we've just learned about Chris Lowe, I think we should prioritise him right now. Let's get him down here. I'm sorry you feel let down, mate, but I have issues of my own at the moment and I need to spend some time alone with Amy. Mate, I've nowhere to stay tonight. Then find a hotel like a normal person. We might just want to consider something, though. I know stuff, Jamie, about your boy that night. You might just want to bear that in mind. <sighs> get the fuck out of my ass. What time's low here? Should be here now. 
Oh, no. Shit. 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 Google your name. I wish to apologize to Mr. Carr and his family, and indeed to Hayley Reed's family, for any distress that has been caused by my mistake. I would urge whoever found this document to take it to the nearest police station and hand it in as soon as possible. Thank you. Peter Carr. Oh. <laughs> Pete Carr. He's been attacked outside his office. Stabbed. Oh, no. Well, they say he's going to be OK, but... No. No. How old was Elliot? 15. Already arrested twice for possession of cannabis, uh, once for ecstasy, and just one month before New Year's Eve 1999 for stealing his dad's car and driving it whilst drunk. Which is why I have to ask you, James, did Elliot take your car that night? No. Maybe... Jamie. He rang us all after he'd first been interviewed by you, and he said he told you that we all stayed in that night. The inference I took was that we should all say the same. Except then yesterday, Pete rang me. He said he'd seen Elliot climbing into the house through a first floor window at around two in the morning on New Year's Day. For the past 18 years, I have believed that my son killed Haley Reed because he did steal my car. He was drunk. And when he got back home at two in the morning and I found him in his room in a terrible state, he told me that he'd hit something. He said that he'd got out to see what it was but couldn't find anything and although his gut instinct told him that it was just an animal he was also very scared that it might be a person and for 18 years he and i have hidden that uh, dreadful secret and I'm, I'm so so sorry for that and then she was found and the nightmare should have been over except <sighs> Instead of finally believing that he was innocent, I started to believe that not only had he hit her, but he'd actually found her and hidden her to drive back down a few days later, retrieve the body and bury it in London. And how do you know he didn't do exactly what you've described? He reminded me that we drove back early on the second to put him on a flight to Switzerland for a school skiing trip. He was away for 10 days. There'll be school records. <clears throat> if what he's saying is true, then to get from the Farmdales to the party house, there's absolutely no reason for her to be passing the church or where Elliot Hollis was spotted driving the car. Which would seem to suggest James Hollis is telling the truth as well as Peter Carr. As she walked from here to here, if she encountered anyone, the more likely would be Chris Lowe or Tim Fitch. So yesterday we got in touch with uh, DVLA to see if any of our four main suspects had any endorsements for uh, the days after New Year. And my thinking was, you have a dead body in your boot, you might be driving uh, a little faster than normal. So here is a copy of Tim Finch's driving license endorsements going back 35 years. There's four speeding offences on there, which is kind of normal. Except for the date, the second one, 3rd of January 2000. That's the day after he got back to London. The ticket was issued at 6.20 a.m. on the A405. Which is where? Six miles outside of Midnam. Was he heading to or from? From. 